It's a rainy day. I'm gonna take advantage to do a little bit of a survey on how water's moving across the property. Because these streams don't flow all the time. You can see this one's pretty serious. Not too deep, but a lot of flow over a wide area coming in a storm drain. And then I have to clear all this out sometime. <laughs> Not today, though. Then it kind of consolidates to this actually purpose-built ditch. Kind of a nice feature. It's a shame we don't get more flow during, you know, the rest of the year. But you can see there's some kind of spots that pool and do stay wet for a while. Um, so I think I might kind of dig some trenches to be like a little feature in this garden to help with drainage. It's moving at a pretty quick clip today. You don't see that too often. Now this garden, still awful, still wet. Just as wet as ever, of course. So I definitely need to do a little bit of um, trenching. It's kind of strange too, because there is a really serious slope from like over there to here. So I'm not sure why the water is so slow moving across the surface. It's very mucky too. Dead, well not dead, but defoliated rhododendron there. And it's hard to tell where it's coming from too. Like, you know, clearly it's wet here and flows from here, but I guess it's just percolating out of the higher slope. Maybe there's like a little perched water table here or something. But yeah, you can kind of see this area behind me it starts. It's mucky, mucky, wet, mucky, wet. And then it kind of comes close to going into the stream, but doesn't quite make it over the bank. And then we have this other wet spot that joins up with it. And you can see it's just this huge rambling wet spot. Oh, my boots get stuck. Um, but same thing, you know, it's just, maybe it's a perched water table or it's percolating out of the ground upstream because once you get up here, you know, kind of starts there, kind of starts here, but there's not much leading up to it. <laughs> the ground uh, upland from it just kind of seems normal and not too mucky and not too wet. Not a lot of water movement over the surface. So I think uh, the solution is just going to be some trenching. You can see there's a trench here. Kind of works needs some maintenance that's just draining uh, into the brook there. And it kind of starts, I don't know if you can see that little circular rock, starts on the slope, which is its whole own problem. You can see how wet it gets all there. I need to do some serious trenching work. And a good lesson in permaculture. This is a Japanese maple I planted. Uh, soon after we moved in and I didn't realize how nasty and wet this area gets for like several months because we moved in at the end of June when things had dried up a lot. So you should always wait a year <laughs> before you plant things. You should wait for uh, the seasons to show you what your land does, which is a permaculture practice. So, yeah. Ooh, getting stuck. You can see it does flow over here, those two big sections, but it's so slow. And by the time you get down here, there's like a negligible flow. So I think some trenching to make little mini streams will do a lot to kind of keep this area from being so mucky in spring. Because when it's this mucky, I can't even do anything to maintain it. I can't bring brush mowers, regular mowers, anything heavy through. I can't even bring a wheelbarrow through. Yeah, this is the trench coming off the driveway there. And this one does all right. It hasn't been maintained for a while, but it does the job. 
And you can kind of see like all this land to the right of it is much more manageable. I mean, it's obviously wet now because it's raining, but it doesn't stay mucky. Clear out some weeds and it just joins up. So that's kind of what I want is more streams like this, you know, maybe two or three out there to kind of keep more of the land in a nice state. And then this whole area, I have to get creative because it needs a lot of, a lot of help to not be so mucky. I can't even get my equipment out of the barn this time of year, which isn't really feasible. So you can see this slope, pretty awful, pretty mucky. It's meant to be an access for like trucks or equipment, but you know, for the next three months, you won't be able to take anything down it without it getting stuck. And you can even see here, just my brush mower. I had to steal this ramp from the barn to try and get it out of the mud. And even, even where it's not like uh, dug in like that, there's just giant puddles, even up there. The whole area looks good from here, but it's one glorified puddle. So I think what I'll do, that other trench that used to be better is kind of over there. I think I'm gonna dig a trench all along the outside of the slope, this rock wall, and come into the stream before it goes underground. I think that will do a lot because it's very wet and a little low by the rock wall. Um, and if I dig it like a foot deep, it'll help the rest of the land to drain because the water can percolate through the soil. And you can kind of see there's a little bit of a ditch here. Maybe it was trenched once upon a time, but it's in desperate need of some love. Yeah, I'll have it come in here. That whole area is another problem. And it comes out over here. So I think what I also have to do, you can kind of see how the grass here, the turf, has a curve, kind of a meandering curve. I think I'll dig a trench along the edge and come in about here, or maybe down there a little, to have another one to drain, you know, on the lower end. Because you can probably see, like up by the barn and the studio, and that access point, that's all a lot higher. Easily two feet, three feet higher than it is down here. But obviously I don't wanna dig like six or seven trenches that just go like from uphill to downhill because you'd have to build a million bridges, it'd be ugly, hard to mow, all that stuff. So I think some trenches down that driveway. Trench kind of starting over there. It's very muddy on that slope which is kind of dangerous actually, and have it come around and enter here. And that should work to drain a lot of this stuff. You can see all of it, I don't know if you can hear. It's not just like a normal lawn with water from the rain. It's pretty gross. Here I kind of have to do some extreme work. It's kind of, extra deep here. I think this is where the line for the water is dug and you can see it's lower. So of course it erodes and gets even lower and lower every year. So, and then all back here is really wet. Uh, I don't know if you can see the rock wall there. I'm allowed to do whatever I want up to that rock wall because it's considered disturbed land. Once you get past it, um, there isn't wetland per se, but there's land that's wetland setback, so that I'm limited in how I can maintain it. So yeah, and then we're down here, still awful. You can kind of see there's a little bit of a natural gully here with water flowing, and I probably will have to do something maybe along the outside of this paddock on the next to Donnie's studio, because water does want to just like run down it. I try to do some swales spots where it's practical but uh, like over here by the farm I could do some but in these areas that are just lawns and might be for entertaining swales aren't really practical <sighs> then you can see this area again I don't know if it's like a perched water table problem it's so wet and even when it's not raining weirdly it's the most wet right about here which is like 
not the low point not a high flat point it's like the middle of a steep slope i would expect this to run off and drain but like i make footprints like this on a normal day here which is not practical because again my equipment comes out of the barn there i have to come around the yard you can see where i've made tire tracks and i get stuck <laughs> so it's not practical uh farm's coming along have to build the second raised bed did some uh raised beds that don't have any wood or compost i have to spread on them up here is pretty good you know you'd expect that on a slope I don't know why it's so bad further down. Yeah, up here I don't really have any problems. It's a little muddy where we did work, but otherwise it's fine. But let's take a look at the other storm drain creek. Over here, you know, I don't care as much because I'm not working yet over here. I'm not planting yet over here, but it's going to become a problem. When I get around to it, you can see, you know, low points collect. This isn't so much a problem. It's almost like a natural small swale. You can hear the horses. You know, it comes down to a point and then there's a bump up. So I don't mind this. I'd like to do more of this so that water doesn't spill into the areas I don't want it. And I can keep it upslope more so that it percolates slowly and waters the vegetable garden. Another depression here. I'm not sure what it's from, but uh, you can maybe, you know, do a little work to it to take advantage. You know, like dig it in a little more, bring it around where it already wants to go and just dig it that way and kind of use like a floodgate to water some of my uh, soil beds. Especially if I went from kind of where it starts here and all the way over the storm drain creeks there i could build a little bridge actually you can see it over the start of it over there i could build a little bridge and have a trench going this way for kind of floodgate watering it's a little wet here i'm not sure if that's just because it's raining today but you know the creek's right there so a little drainage trench wouldn't be too big of a deal <sighs> to come through I need wood chips badly and I need to chip a lot of wood badly. So it's kind of a two birds, one stone. But you can see when I talked about making this an irrigation pond someday, maybe, or just a pond for decoration purposes, this is a lot of water. I don't know if I can easily convey how much water it is, but I'm on the cusp of the slope of it. It goes down another foot probably. Um, and it's doing that naturally. So, you know, if I divert some water, maybe build up a bank, I could have a low effort pond without a liner even if I brought in some clay maybe. Of course, it's hard to see from here because I'm a little below street level. But you can kind of see there's a depression there. There's a storm drain comes under the road, comes to here. This one goes at a very quick clip. Uh, really meandering. It's kind of cute, honestly. But I want to kind of define the banks a little better. You know, like, if I'm standing right here, I'm level with the bottom of that bed there. It's just that there's weeds kind of pushing the water away. So I might try to dig a little more of a trench and heave it onto the banks to make it a little firmer. But because this is a storm drain, um, you know, it's not protected. I have the wetland maps for my property and it doesn't start for another few hundred feet that way. It doesn't start being protected at least until it starts meandering and kind of sitting on the surface. So I could try to figure out some way, maybe like here where it kind of drops off more quickly put a little floodgate so that this would back up some and then like I was saying earlier you could divert it to a trench that way to come over to the farm and provide irrigation because if I don't back it up um, when it's hot and sunny in the summer there's no water here I'd have to back it up to collect rainwater 
to release when I need. And hopefully I don't trip or lose a boot. That happened earlier. Yeah. And yeah, here, there's a couple steps, I guess you'd call it, where it like kind of comes down in elevation to a slow point and jumps down in elevation again. Honestly, I'd probably like to slow the water down a little if I'm gonna try to use it for some practical purpose. Honestly, this, <laughs> I'd like to clear a little, but I'm afraid. Ooh, ooh, okay, yeah, I'm afraid I will fall in, so we're not gonna do that right now. Someday when I have two hands free. Yeah, it keeps going. Hard to believe, but a lot of these pine trees are only about 20 years old or so. Um, if you download Google Earth, the software to your uh, desktop or Mac, uh, you can have a lot more access to satellite data. This whole pine section, you know, even here where you can see it's already clear, um, was all an open field. All of that wasn't there 20 years ago. Um, and this stream was just in the middle of a grassy field so this is all disturbed land and most of this isn't even in the wetlands anyway so I can clear a lot of it maybe come in and plant fruit trees or could even have livestock but this is a little far from the house and getting back to permaculture practices livestock usually require daily feeding or maintenance and as a part of permaculture you want to keep things you have to deal with frequently uh, closer to your home it's less effort. You're more likely to take care of it. Not to spend so much time in transit. So I don't come back here too much. You can see the neighbor's property. I have some stuff back there. Basically where their lawn starts is about the property line. So, you know, this area is really wet too. But I could plant some fruit trees, dig a few trenches. Just, you know, you can see over here, like, there's kind of water coming down the slope and then coming here. I just want to redirect it to the creek for simplicity. All these pines were kind of growing too, too close to the stream and in the wetlands and they all came down before we owned the property. Over here. It's a little treacherous. <laughs> uh, I really don't want to fall on my butt. But I have my rain gear on, so I wouldn't be too wet. So yeah, whole kind of clump of pines came down in groups. Because once we get back here, it does start getting a lot wetter. Yeah, I'm just coming down. I'll probably get over there, though. So yeah, this section where it starts meandering and there really is no discernible stream like that, this is when it starts to become protected and I'm limited in, ooh, that was deep. <laughs> I'm limited in uh, what I'm allowed to do and not allowed to do. Make my way through. Because yeah, you can see this is all just kind of permanently wet. Even in, in the summer, this is wet. to fall. A lot of muck. Can see my boot could come oof, right off if I'm not careful. And these are actually my husband's boots so I don't think he would appreciate it. Uh, I got a bunch of mud in them. Uh, I'm back to a rock wall. Yeah so it's kind of ambiguous here like the rock wall is supposed to be where disturbed land ends, but uh, I'm not supposed to use, I'm not supposed to move earth over here is basically the protection. 
And then once you get out here, I'm not supposed to make any alterations really, not even removing plants. Invasives, it's fine, but no uh, native trees or plants. Yeah, and then you just kind of get into the woods, which, you know, I don't manage any of this land now, and I probably won't ever, other than, you know, removing lots of invasive plants. So I don't really care as much about the hydrology back here. So yeah, that's a good appraisal of how water moves on the property I expect to manage and farm. Um, and, you know, I'm taking this video to share, but also I'm taking it for my own record keeping. Uh, it's good to kind of keep track of how water moves on your land, not just for making swales, but uh, for what can live where. You know, some plants, some crops don't mind living in mucky, wet soil like this, and some are completely intolerant of it, and you don't want to plant. Like that Japanese maple I planted right in the middle of a path that's, you know, gross like this. So, observe your land like you're supposed to. And I need to figure out how I'm going to manage the parts I do manage. You know, because you also don't want to drain all the water away um, when it could be useful. You know, like I was saying about making floodgates and irrigation ponds, if I can slow water or collect water, that can be a big advantage to farming. And even just to your lawns. I know a lot of swales and permaculture techniques aren't popular in normal lawns, but a swale at the top of your property can cut down how much you need to water a lawn dramatically. Slowing water movement across your land is beneficial to pretty much everyone. It stops erosion, it can stop infiltration into basements, so it's good to be aware of what your property does. So even here, it's probably harder for you guys to see, but the slope's pretty steep, and then it kind of meanders, but there's like a ditch, gully, that kind of comes along here. And so that's another thing where like, I have to decide, do I want to drain? Do I want to slow? Do I want to pool? What's useful? This I'd probably want to drain because down here it gets wetter. You can see this is a spot where the previous owners tried to do a percolation test for septic because they wanted to try and see if a developer would buy this land. Um, and I don't know if you can tell, but it failed, at least down here. I don't know why you would test down here and not further up the slope. You can see when you're not managing water carefully, like this pipe is allowing water to percolate and then it's kind of making a sinkhole underneath. It's eroding soil underneath the ground and it's caving in over time. So water is a very powerful force and it is unrelenting. So yeah, I want to build some raised beds over here, some wooden ones, and that can put on hold from all this rain we've been having. But hopefully this week I'll be able to get them done because we got compost delivered and I have some seedlings, coal crops that are ready to go on the ground. Got some blackberries ready to go on the ground. So I need to kind of get a hurry on that. But then we can get into some actual farming content instead of hydrology content. So yeah, stay safe. We're trying not to leave our property until the end of April because where we live, uh, the next two weeks is expected to be the peak of COVID-19 infections. Uh, you know, that's why sometimes, you know, growing your own food can be a big advantage. We're not there yet, but it'd be a lot easier to hole up in our house if we were. So stay safe and I'll see you next time.